This resilience to the American economy has surprised a lot of people, but that brings with it the flip side of the Fed's job of getting inflation down, and those are, are those are two forces that are somewhat in opposition. So we'll have to see how that how that unfolds. The other thing that we also have to be very cognizant of is the federal deficit and debt problem. We have a debt ceiling fight that is coming. It promises to be uglier than any that we've seen in the past from all indications. And it'll probably get resolved. It'll, it may include some turbulent moments for the economy. But we should also not confuse ourselves that we are on an unsustainable fiscal path. And that as uh, in present course and speed, increases in debt costs itself to, to fund our debt, increases in health care costs for Medicare, obviously important to be able to finance are going to drive our deficit and our debt ever higher. And at some point, we have to deal with that. Uh, the international mood is one of tension. You have uh, a community coming together in Washington this week that is very much a believer in further integration of the world, further globalization of the world, at a time when there are so many forces pushing, pulling us toward deglobalization, uh, away from China, away from long supply lines, away from lots of other countries that we don't want to be doing as much business with. And, and there's a cost to all that. I, I accept the national security need to protect our supply lines and be able to have things like semiconductors in this country. But there's a cost to all that. Part of why we've had, a, had until the pandemic a low inflationary economy was because we were able to buy things cheaper, better from other parts of the world to the benefit of American consumers. And losing that in, in, incurs a cost to American consumers and we can't kid ourselves about that. So the deglobalization, again, on the non-economic basis, I defer to those experts as an economic matter. It's honestly not good for anybody.